still is approval that a 10 billion naira intervention be inserted in 2019 budget to assist displaced persons in Zamfara state, now the epicenter of banditry. Of the upper chamber also called for the establishment of 10-year presidential initiative to cater for the need of the displaced person affected by the armed bandits in the state. These were part of resolution reached by the lawmaker on Wednesday plenary after the debate on the motion protesting the incessant killing in Zafra State, sponsored by Senator Kabiru Marafa. Uh, urge the National Assembly to make a provision of a modest sum of 10 billion naira in the 2019 appropriation as intervention fund to cut off with the IDPs and other persons affected by the activities of these uh, armed bandits in the forest. Uh, Mr. President, I think uh, <clears throat> maybe looking at this prayer, uh, the crisis in the forest is capable of, like I said, engulfing the whole of North uh, uh, Western states. As I talk to you today, Mr. President, <clears throat> more than 75% of people in the forest state are not sleeping in their houses. Uh, more than these 44,000 opens roam across streets and everything, and nothing is being done, you know, to uh, take care of uh, this situation. Mr. President, the last prayer is urge the federal government to set up an ad hoc committee to be known as Presidential Initiative on Zamfara State, PZAMS, with a 10 year lifespan to manage the said funds and the subsequent uh, allocations uh, and donations. Mr. President, uh, the situation in the forest state is quite pathetic, like I said. It requires uh, the attention and uh, the hands of all the well-meaning Nigerians uh, to look into. Deputy Senate President Ike Kremado and the Chief Whip of the Senate, Senator Olushola Adeyeye, separately recommended the creation of state police and constitutional amendment to devote more power to the state as a lasting solution to the problem. Nigeria, as I keep saying, is the only federal government, federal, federal state in the whole world that is doing the type of policing we are doing, which is decentralized kind of policing. As long as we are doing it, we are not getting it right. And the security situation will continue to get worse. So we must go back and be able to ask ourselves, what do we need to do? And what we need to do is simple. Let us go and decentralize our police. Create police at different levels, especially at the state level. It may have its own problems. But we must also address the issues of concern to those who fear about the, uh, the police, uh, the police uh, at state level. So doing to ensure that on a long term, Nigeria is protected the way other countries are being protected using a decentralized policy. We cannot get police, the type of police we have, and expect any different. It will never work. So I want to appeal that we need to take it seriously and have a conversation with all those who think that there is something wrong with state police and be able to meet ourselves halfway or be able to understand ourselves in such a way that we'll be able to provide the security and welfare which the, the country enjoys all governments at every level in Nigeria. And finally, sir. Every crime is local. And the solution to every crime is local. Absolutely. The idea that senators in Nigeria, some of the correct will say, we should not continue to deceive ourselves. I know that police is costly. If we are going to allow some states to have police according to their own wishes, therefore, we must revisit the revenue formula, such as more money go to states. States are where the people live. States are where the problems occur. States are where local ingenuity can be brought to solve local problems. We have only two months left. I don't believe it is too late. Tomorrow, let our Constitution Review Committee bring only one item. And let us fast track everything that we must have state police. On his part, Deputy Majority Leader Bala Ibn Nahala said three-month ban on the use of commercial motorcycle will go a long way in addressing banditry in Zamfara State. But wherever there is killing in Zamfara, those people who perpetrated this thing came on motorbikes. 
So for a short period of time, it's better for them, for the people to do with the inconvenience of not having the convenience of transporting them by motorbike than for us to now totally ban the use of motorbike in Zamfara State. This is one, one action that you can take that will significantly alter the entire thing. The entire Zamfara State and the part of neighboring KB State will ban the use of motorbike so that at least this will give police two issues. One, it means whoever is seen on motorbike, the first presumption is that he is a killer and then he should be arrested. Sir, it's all a matter of strategy, sir. If today the government says that they, it has banned, you, even if you deploy the entire army in Zamfara, provided the root cause of the problem is not attacked, we're going to have this problem. So first action that I would suggest, sir, as chairman of the National Assembly, the legislative intervention that we can do, sir, is to summon the speaker of the Zamfara State House of Assembly to face a committee here where we will draft laws that they should go immediately and pass it. And then the, we now ask the police and the army to enforce it. Nobody should be seen on bike. And it's going to be a temporary issue, sir. Maybe for three months. All over the world, when we have problems like this, there is what is referred to as sunset law that lasts within a given period of time to enable the... Other lawmakers also in that the only way to tackle the numerous security challenges in Nigeria is to decentralize the Nigerian police force. We have to do something drastic. The police reform bill is still before us. I believe that in the long term, the police as it is constituted is not the kind of structure that you simply throw money in. We have done that quite often. I believe that the command and structure of the police needs to be properly restructured so that those two executives in the states should be able to command the police bosses in those states rather than waiting for instructions from Abuja. Because some security situations require very urgent actions. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, this is one motion that I believe we can spend days, not even today or alone, because it's something that concerns the most fundamental reasons why government should exist. I therefore su support this motion, and I hope that we are going to very practically engage the security agencies, engage properly the executive arm of government, so that we are on the same page and see where we can come in and intervene properly in order to deal with this problem that is uh, everywhere now. We have a duty as citizens and as a government to protect and defend this republic. And we must agree that this country is at war. At war in the very sense that the number of people killed in Zamfara is worse than the reports we have been receiving in countries like Somalia, Yemen, and even Afghanistan. For how long will we continue to assume that we are in government, or we are part of government, or this is a government. And the issue has still not been addressed. It has reached such a level that it's very clear to each and every one of us that all the formulas being adopted and being applied has refused to work. People are dying. And the violence and the kidnappings has gone beyond Zamfara. It is in Kaduna State. After Lomika took their turn to support the motion, President of the Senate, Bukala Saraki, noted that until Nigeria begin to look inward toward the establishment of the state police, the country will keep having security challenges, which can ordinarily be addressed. Bandits in San Francisco State, those in favor of prayer to say aye, those against say nay. The eyes are prayer three urge the federal government to set up an ad hoc committee to be known as presidential initiative on Zamfara with a 10-year lifespan to manage the set funds and subsequent allocations and donations. Those in favor of prayer three say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The eyes have it. From the contributions we've had, I think it's key that we begin to look at the cause of the problem and look for long-term solutions. I think that what we did yesterday in trying to strengthen the funding of the police and what we have 
before us the police reform bill, which will be laid today. I think the sooner that we can pass that will also help us in addressing. But more importantly, is that we must still go back to what a lot of us are advocating here, that there is need for us to have state or community police. It's the way forward. Otherwise, we'll continue to run into this problem. On the area of oversight, I think there's a lot that also that we need to do to ensure that we hold the security agencies accountable. In the related development, some senators also raised concern over the activity of kidnappers and bandits who rob and rape unsuspecting citizens in different parts of the country. The Nigerian Senate may veto President Muhammadu Buhari on two bills out of 17 rejected B by the President. This emanated from the report of the Technical Committee declined assent to be by Mr. President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federation, submitted by the Chairman, Senator David Umaru, Niger East. The B, a constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999, fourth alteration and the Industrial Development Income Tax Relief Amendment Bill. Four other bills were recommended to be withdrawn according to the 34 page report presented at the floor of the Senate on Wednesday by Senator Umaru. In his presentation, Senator Umaru informed the Senate that 11 out of the 17 rejected bills are to be represented to the floor, meaning that the bill will pass through another legislative work. He hoped that the committee report will go a long way to address the controversies that surround the return of the 17 bill to the National Assembly by President Buhari. Flowing from the analysis and comments, as well as our observations and findings, we hereby recommend as follows. One, that the Senate do consider and pass again the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999, fourth alteration number eight bill 2018. Two, that the Senate do consider and pass again the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999, fourth alteration number 15 bill 2018. Three, that the Senate do consider and pass again the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999, fourth alteration number 20 amendment bill 2018. Four, that the Senate do consider and pass again the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999, fourth alteration number 22, Bill 2018. That the Senate do consider five, uh, that the Senate do consider and pass again the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999, fourth alteration number 24, Bill 2018. Six, that the Senate do override Mr. President's veto on the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999, Fourth alteration number 28 bill 2018. Seven, that the Senate do consider and pass again the stamp duties amendment bill 2018. Eight, that the Senate do override Mr. President's veto on the industrial development income tax relief amendment bill 2018. Nine, that the Senate do consider and pass again the petroleum industry governance bill 2018. Ten, that the Senate do withdraw the Chartered Institute of Entrepreneurship Establishment Bill 2018. 11. That the Senate do withdraw the Subsidiary Legislation Legislative Scrutiny Bill 2018. 12. That the Senate do consider and pass again the National Institute of Hospitality and Tourism Establishment Bill 2018. 13. That the Senate do consider and pass again the National Research and Innovation Council Bill 2018. 14. That the Senate do withdraw the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency Amendment Bill 2018. 15. That the Senate do consider and pass again the National Agricultural Seeds Council Bill 2018. 16. That the Senate do withdraw the Advanced Fee Fraud and Other Related Offenses Amendment Bill 2018. And that the Senate do, uh, 17. That the Senate do consider and pass again the Agricultural Credit Guarantee Scheme Fund Amendment Bill 2018. I so move. In conclusion, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, on behalf of members of this technical committee, I wish to thank Mr. President of the Senate and indeed 
my distinguished colleagues for the opportunity to serve in this committee. It is our hope that what we have done will go a long way to address the controversies that surround the return of these bills to the National Assembly by Mr. President. All the bills are attached to the report. Thank you, Mr. President. With the latest report, the Eighth Senate, which is winding down, may end up in crisis with the executive if the report of the committee will be considered as presented. Many analysts also believe that ground to get the two-third of the lawmaker needed for veteran president have been lost, as most members of the Eighth Assembly, although the battle of returning to the National Assembly, have lost interest in the business of legislation, while some are fighting the battle of the survivor to return are in law court. The Nigerian federal government has responded to the situation by the major opposition political party of the country, the People's Democratic Party, that the country's external debt profile has become a huge burden for the economy. Speaking to state house correspondent after the weekly Federal Executive Council meeting in Abuja, Minister of Budget and National Planning Udoma Udo Udoma said the country is still within a safe limit when it comes to external borrowing. It's our debts are sustainable. Um, we do have a revenue challenge, and we are focusing on that. And once the revenues uh, uh, come up, um, it will be obvious that uh, we, we don't have a debt problem at all. Um, and we are working on a number of initiatives uh, to increase our revenues. We're looking at um, initiatives uh, to widen the tax base. We're looking at initiatives to um, to increase efficiency in collections, uh, we have the, we're looking at the single window, uh, which will help to increase efficiency in customs collections. So we're looking at a very many different ways to improve our revenues. Um, with regard to the budget, um, we are happy to see the focus of the National Assembly on the budget. And we look forward to uh, whenever it's passed, you know, the executive uh, receiving it. Uh, thank you. Council also approved a memo for prisons reforms and the congestions as made known by the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abuba Kamalami. So arising from the efforts of the federal government to look at the possibility of decongesting our prison formations, the Office of the Attorney General has presented a council memo today which is um, wave-based automated network interconnectivity system that is integrated to come off with a digitalized way of the congestion prison. How does it work? The idea is to have in place in all the prison formations an interconnectivity to certain formations, particularly the office of the attorney general the police, the prison service, and indeed selected courts that could be connected to the prison formation and then to these offices. And the essence is to have an idea on day in, day out basis as to what of turns in our prisons across the nation. So at a glance, on a click of a button in the office of the Attorney General, the Attorney General can be able to access the information on a daily basis as to what truly obtains in prison formation. Who is it that is entitled to be taken to court today? Who is it that is entitled to be released today? Who is it that has remained in prison for a period longer than a period of sentence if he, were to have been, if he was to have been uh, sentenced arising from decision of the court? Who is it that is in prison formation that is not entitled to be there? So it is a kind of um, uh, digitalized process that affords the office, the stakeholders in the Justice Administration an opportunity on a daily basis to look at the, uh, to have an idea as to what obtains in prison for the purpose of decision making. So at the end of the day, rather than the conventional practice whereby a committee, an ad hoc 
committee is put in place to be moving from one prison formation to the other to have a physical assessment of things in the comfort of the respective offices of the stakeholders they have an opportunity to assess the situation take a policy decision and take whatever decision is necessary which will assist at the end of the day in the congestion of the prison through digital process of internet working between the prison formations and the stakeholders um, uh, uh, and the uh, stakeholders, justice sector stakeholders. The Federal Safety Council meeting presided over by Vice President Yemi Oshibaju also approved some memos from the Ministries of Aviation, Ministries of Education and the Federal Capital Territory Administration. From Abuja, I am Festus A. Jirogen Fifen for Ben Television. Nigerian ambassador to United Arab Emirates, Mohamed Rimi, says 446 Nigerians are currently serving different time in the UAE prison. Rimi broke the news during President Mohamed Buhari town hall meetings with Nigerians in the Emirates. The ambassador said that 446 Nigerians are serving different jail term for crime ranging from possession of hard drugs to engaging in robbery. According to him, it is disheartening to state that 446 Nigeria are currently serving various jail time in the prison across UAE on the account of committing various crimes including possession and consumption of hard drugs, engaging in armed robbery. Rimi also said, in the spirit of forgiveness, tolerance and accommodation, the UAE government granted amnesty to all irregular residents in the country. In 2018, 5,744 standard passports were issued by the embassy, out of which 3,164 were specifically issued during the amnesty program. Further, 1,346 emergency traveling certificates were issued to Nigerians to facilitate their return home, he said. He added that 5,021 Nigerians were granted amnesty to enable them to live and pursue legitimate business in the Emirates. International Monetary Fund IMF has one Nigerian and other market countries taking loan from China to consider the term of such facilities, especially their compliance with the Paris Club arrangement. Speaking at the ongoing IMF World Bank Sprint meeting in the United States, Director IMF Monitoring and Capital Market De Department Tobia Andran said there was nothing bad in borrowing from China except that the terms of such loans are always questionable. He said loans from China are good, but the country should consider the term of the loan and all the country that when they borrow from abroad that the term are favorable for the borrower and should be conforming with the Paris Club arrangement. Andrea, who spoke on the Global Financial Stability Report, said, Let me reiterate that in many frontier markets, we see that share of the debt that is not conforming with the Paris Club standard is on the rise. That means that if there's any debt restructuring down the road one day, that could be very unfavorable to this country. So the borrowing term, the covenant, are extremely important. Meanwhile, data from the Debt Management Office showed that Nigerian total public debt rose to 24.39 trillion naira as of December 2018, representing a year-on-year -year growth of 12.25 percent. 